Okay, so before we get started creating our first component in Angular, let's talk for a minute about the overall structure of our application. So we'll actually be building two applications to power our dashboard. We'll have the front end Angular application and we'll also be running a back end web API in .NET Core 2.0. Now the bulk of this course will really focus on how to set up the Angular application, um, but we will go into some detail also about how to build out the API. With that said, it will be important to keep in mind that we have a server side to our application and a client side. We're gonna start working on the client side first. And so this is what will be running in the user's browser. So this will comprise our front-end application, and we're gonna obviously build out this front-end application in Angular, which is a front-end framework. And so it'll be the responsibility of our Angular application to both fetch the, the data that we'd like to show the user and then present it in some useful manner. Now over on the server side, we'll be running a web API, again in ASP.NET Core 2.0 MVC, and that application will be talking to a Postgres database. So all the data for our application will be stored in a Postgres SQL database, and the web API will have various endpoints to collect data from that database. So for example, we might make some requests for data um, from our client, and and then Angular will make a request out to our web API, which in turn will collect some data from our database, and then the web API will return some result back to our Angular application, which we can then you know, display to our user. So that's the overall you know, sort of setup for the way that this Angular front-end application will be interacting with our web API. Just useful to keep in mind that the Angular side of things is running in the browser on the client side, while our web API and database will be running on a separate server. It'll just be important to keep in mind the fact that Angular and our web API will be running on two separate servers, of course Angular driven by Node, and then um, our web API will be driven by .NET. Okay, so let's start talking about the structure now of the Angular application itself. So we're about to create our first component, but it would be useful um, probably to understand sort of where we're going with this from a big picture point of view. So we have our Angular application and we'll just be building out a singular module. And so the module is gonna contain a number of different components that we can build individually and that will comprise our Angular app. So let's think about this um, in terms of page layout because I think that helps visualize it. So we'll have three sort of main architectural components, if you will, that make up the structure of our page when we visit it. So we'll have a nav bar at the top of the page. We're gonna use that in this case simply to hold our logo. And then we'll put links in the app sidebar which will take us to different pages of our application, if you will. So the different pages of our application will then be rendered in this router outlet section on the right side. And so when we click on links in the app sidebar, what gets rendered in the router outlet will change. So the router outlet, so for our dashboard, we'll have three different components, um, sort of parent components that can get rendered inside of router outlet. These components themselves will contain subcomponents or child components that will define things like our charts and tables, and we'll be able to arrange these in any way that we like to create different pages. So we'll have a page that has some charts and things on it. We'll have a page um, that has a table component with a pagination component, as well as a number of other components that we'll talk about uh, once we get to actually designing them. But that should give you sort of a high level view again of the layout of this application and kind of how things will be set up. The next thing that I'd like us to keep in mind as we move forward here is a high level view of how data will go in and out of our Angular components and be set on the various properties that are defined in those components. And so the way that it's gonna work is that we'll have a component, say in this case, an app chart component. What we'll do is we'll actually inject services into our components, which will implement Angular's built-in HTTP to actually communicate with our web API. So it'll be the service's responsibility to actually fetch data, and then the component can actually use that service to set values on the various properties that are defined in that component, and even pass requests in from that component to the service, which can then make some specific request out to our web API to return some other data. 
This kind of setup is really nice because we can develop our services separately from our components and any component that requires some specific type of data, we can actually then just inject some service into that component which already has all the methods on it to actually communicate with our web API. If this is a little confusing right now, it will definitely start to make sense when we start to build out each of these parts of our application. So everything that you see on the, the screen here, with the exception of the HTTP module, um, we'll be implementing from scratch. So we'll be building out an app chart component. We'll be building a number of different services that uh, communicate with a web API, which we'll also be building. And we're going to make use of a lot of the really great tools that Angular provides for us to be able to set up this type of architecture. All right, with that said, let's head to our terminal and create our first component. Okay, so we're back at our terminal and we're in the root of our project. So what I want to do now is use the Angular CLI tool to generate our first component. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're just going to type ngGC for generate components. That's shorthand for the Angular CLI um, tool to generate us a new component. And we're just going to call it navbar. And so you'll see what this will do is actually create all the files that comprise this component. So we have our template, we've got the spec file for testing, and we have the TypeScript and the style sheet. So if we head back into the code, we can actually see now within our project directory, we have this navbar folder, and it contains those files that were just generated for us. If we take a look in here, we can see it's even scaffolded out for us. Um, a component with the class navbar component exported and the constructor. We can also visit the app.module.ts and we can see that the navbar component has also been added to the imports for this, uh, this module. All right, so now what I'd like to do is to generate the component for the sidebar. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so this will do the same thing except for our sidebar component. And again, if we take a look at the code once again, we'll see that we also now have a sidebar component imported for us in our app.module module file, as well as a folder containing all of the necessary files to define this component. Let's take a look at the layout file for our sidebar. So you can see that it just uh, generated a simple HTML file with a paragraph tag with the sidebar works message in it. So in fact, if we implement this component, we should see this in the browser. So what I'm going to do now is head over into our app.component.html and we're going to remove some of this boilerplate code. So I'm just going to take out everything except for this uh, div that was at the top of our page. And then in fact, I'm going to remove everything except the title and subtitle for the time being. Then at the very top of the page, what I'll do is we'll just go ahead and inject our navbar here. So we're going to prefix all the components in this application with app and then the name of the component. Okay, so here we'll have our app navbar. And then directly below it, let's just go ahead and do our sidebar, so app sidebar here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that file, and now we need to make sure our server is running, so I'll head back to the terminal. And as I had before, I have two terminals open, and one will be used just to run the server. And we can fire that back up with ng-serve. Alright, so once this is done, we'll head over to localhost port 4200. And so yeah, we can see now at the top of the page here, navbar works and sidebar works. Both of these are getting delivered from our navbar and sidebar components respectively. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. And so again, if we take a look at our app navbar, let's just head into the uh, TypeScript file for app navbar. We can see that the selector defined for this comp component corresponds to the tags that we provide to inject it in our template here. Okay, so what I'd like to go ahead and do now is to create a basic layout for our app so that we can get it at least looking a little bit nicer while we develop. So the quickest way we can get that up and running is by bringing in Bootstrap. So let's take a look at how to do that now. All right, and so actually the first thing that I'm going to do before we add uh, Bootstrap is to actually just go ahead and make a commit. So we added these two components.
and we'll go ahead and push it up to GitHub. Okay, so now we're going to add Bootstrap, and there are a number of different ways that we could do this. There are libraries out there, such as ng Bootstrap at the time of this recording, that can be used to generate Bootstrap components. But in fact, what I'm going to do for the purposes of this course is to actually just install Bootstrap itself, which will, which will require installing jQuery. Now, one of the benefits of using a, a separate library like ng-bootstrap is that it would allow us to sort of use some native Angular style directives to generate our components and we wouldn't need to install jQuery, for instance. However, just to get up and going here and, and to try and ensure that you can follow along if you already have some familiarity with Bootstrap but perhaps not with Angular, then I've decided just to install Angular itself with jQuery into our project. Perhaps in a future add-on to this course, I will show you how you can switch over to using a library like ng-bootstrap, but as I said, this way may make it a little bit easier to follow along if you've used bootstrap in the past. So we'll use npm to install it, and we'll use dash dash save to save it to this project. And we're going to install bootstrap at 4.0.0, dash beta. and then jQuery. Now, while we're in here, we're also gonna install this dependency popper.js. So we can npm install dash save popper.js. And I'll just specify the specific 1.11. Okay, and while we're here, we'll be using one more library in our application, which will be chart.js. So we'll go ahead and install that now as well. Okay, now that that's taken care of, we can go start styling our application. And if you like, we can also make a commit because our package.json has now been updated. So if we get diff, we can actually see what's changed and we can see now that our project will include Bootstrap, Chart.js, jQuery, and Popper.js. And you can see the versions that I'll be using through this course here. Okay, so we can just go ahead and add that and make a commit. Okay, cool. The next thing I'll do is also I'll just go ahead and restart the server. You can control C to actually stop the server and terminate the process that's running it. And then control P and enter just to run the previous command, which was ng serve. Okay, with that running, let's go ahead and start to style our application a little bit. So I'm just going to move the browser off to one side here. And this way we can actually see the styles change as we edit them in code. So below the app nav bar, what I'm going to do is create a new div with class container. And in fact, we'll make this a container fluid. Then inside this div, we'll have a row. So div class row with an ID of main content. And now I'm going to put the sidebar inside of this div. And then just below the sidebar we'll have a bootstrap column here so we'll have a class of col sm9 and we'll give it an id of dashboard now our app sidebar component will make up the rest of the space here in the row so we can just assign a class of col sm3 to make up the remaining space here so this is just some standard bootstrap syntax and of course, we need to close this div. And in here, we can just put a message for the time being. Like content goes here. OK, and then I'm just going to go ahead and remove everything else that we had in our template here. So now that we have the basic structure, we need to actually bring in the Bootstrap CSS. And to get that working, we're going to head into this .angular-cli.json file. 
And you can see that we have this styles array here on line 21 in my case here, which is inside an object that's in our apps array. So we're bringing in this styles.css, which actually corresponds to the styles.css that we have in the app level of our project. I'm gonna keep this as the last element in this array. And before it, we'll go ahead and add a reference to the bootstrap CSS that we have just installed. And so we can find that if we go up one directory and then into node modules, slash bootstrap, slash dist, slash CSS, slash bootstrap, dot min, dot CSS. And then we'll be sure to put a comma here. So if you'd like to confirm this location, what you can do is actually take a look in the node modules directory itself and just be wary that this is a rather large directory, um, but you should be able to find Bootstrap here now if you've installed it correctly using NPM. And then we can see the dist CSS and the various CSS files that are shipped with the Bootstrap version four that we downloaded. Likewise, we have a JavaScript file as well. And this will actually get referenced in our scripts array here. Likewise, in the scripts array, I'll need to bring in jQuery, so we'll do that first as well. So up one directory, once again, node modules, jQuery, dist jQuery dot min dot js. Chances are this path won't change very much over time, um, but if for some reason you're following along, and it's changed since I recorded this video either for the styles or the scripts here. Um, once again, you can just come to the node modules directory and find the files that you're looking for here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this and now we'll bring in the bootstrap. And we can remove this trailing comma. And actually just below jQuery and before Bootstrap, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in Popper as well. Okay, and once again, you should be able to find Popper here uh, just to double check the path. So I found it here in this UMD folder under popper.min.js. Finally, we'll go ahead and bring in chart.js. And once again, just to check that path, we'll check it here. And so we'll bring in chart.min.js. Okay, if that looks good, we can go ahead and save. And now we'll go ahead and restart our server as well. Okay, with the server restarted, we can now see that you'll notice the font has changed a little bit and we have some padding here. Um, so this is kind of confirming that Bootstrap is working. If we right click on the page and inspect, we can also see in the console that we shouldn't be getting any errors. Okay, now we can actually just provide a minimal amount of additional styling here. Once again, just to get the app kind of looking nice as we move forward. In the next video, we'll set that up and then we'll begin building out the sidebar component and the navbar component. All right, see you there.